So the element that we have selected to put in our little box here is cesium, um, which is number 55. So we're going to copy basically what's in this box, except I'm not going to write the name. Yes, that's fine. So cesium is CS. The number that's at the top of the box is 55 for cesium. That is called the atomic number. And then the number at the bottom of the box for cesium, 132.905, that is what we call the average atomic mass, or today we're going to refer to it as the molar mass. I already forgot what the number was, 132.905. So this is average atomic mass or it can also refer to the molar mass. Something I want you to note, um, different teachers do it differently. In my class, something that I am extremely particular about is that at no point ever will we be rounding that number. That is an exact number as far as we're concerned. We're going to use every single digits that, digit that's on it. I don't care if it's 15.999, you're gonna keep all three of those nines, we're not gonna round it. Good? So when we talk about significant figures, that's what you're using. We'll learn about average atomic mass in our next unit. So for now, we're focused on the molar mass part of things. Um, and what molar mass is, is the amount of mass in a mole. So if you go look up molar mass, that's probably what the definition says, the mass of one mole of a substance. Um, molar mass, we're gonna talk about as one mole of whatever it is equals the number of grams of that substance. So it's really the number of grams in one mole. All right, so when we talk about molar mass, we can write it in multiple ways. One way is that we're going to say that one mole of something is equivalent to whatever number of grams on the periodic table. We can also write that the opposite way, where we say the number of grams is equivalent to one mole. Or we can say the number and then grams per mole. So we'll practice using it in all of these ways, hopefully today. As you guys just pointed out, we've got a good 20 minutes left in this class, so. It's okay. All right, so when we are looking at the molar mass of elements versus compounds, um, for an element, it's usually something really straightforward. So for example, for cesium, we just looked it up on our periodic table, so that's CS. For cesium, if I asked you to find the molar mass of that element, you're simply taking the number directly from the periodic table and adding grams per mole to the end. So cesium's molar mass is just 132.9. 905 grams per mole. This means that one mole of cesium equals 132.905 grams of cesium. And then of course I could write it the opposite way as well. I could say 132.905 grams of cesium equals one mole of cesium. Are you with me so far? Okay. 
we also learned something when we first got our periodic tables last last time we talked about them um, about diatomic elements do you remember those if you have your periodic table and you have like a seven sort of thing outlined or colored in or highlighted do you see what diatomic means Yes, no, maybe so. So you had a place to write diatomic. It got cut off by the hole punch, but diatomic was here. So if you have a definition written here. Naturally occurs in pairs. Naturally occurs in pairs. So we have seven elements on our periodic table that naturally occur in pairs. Let's pick one of them. I don't care which one. One of the seven. All right, bromine. All right, bromine is Br. If I just have bromine and I want the molar mass of just bromine as Br, what is the molar mass on our periodic table for bromine? Just Br. Exactly as it appears on the, period on the periodic table. 79.904. Perfect, so 79.904. My pen's running out. 904 grams per mole. Does everyone see how we got that? But because bromine is diatomic, that means that when bromine exists on its own in nature, it's not just Br, but it's Br2. Meaning I have two of them together. So to figure out the molar mass of diatomic bromine, I need to double the mass that it has on the periodic table. So all I'm doing is either multiplying that by two or adding 79.904 plus 79.904. So go ahead and take a second and do that in your calculators. You can use your phone calculator for this if that's the only one you have handy, but we wanna make sure you're practicing in our calculators as well. So 79.904. either plus itself or times two, whatever you prefer. So what would our molar mass of Br2 be? Does that make sense where that came from? So pulling the molar mass of a single element is as simple as looking at the periodic table for that element. If it's something that has a subscript, meaning one of these little numbers, then you're just going to add up however many are in that subscript. Good? All right, and then just to elevate things a little bit more, let me make sure this pen works before I start using it. Um, so this is technically a compound because I have more than one element um, or more than one atom that would be combining. If I did H2O, so finding the molar mass of water, when I look at this, there are two different elements in there. There are hydrogen atoms and there are oxygen atoms or an oxygen atom. The subscript tells you how many of each thing there are. So in this case, how many hydrogens do I have? Two. Two. And how many oxygens do I have? One. Just one. We are still gonna end up adding them together, so we're not multiplying, but I find it easier to do the multiplication like this. So for hydrogen, I would just look up my molar mass on the periodic table. So this would be 1.008. I'm going to write that number down next to this. And then for oxygen, I look up this one and it's 15.999. So after I multiply them, so 2 times 1.008 gives me 2.016. And then 1 times 15.999 equals just 15.999. I'm adding those two numbers together to get the molar mass of my compound. If the multiplication piece is throwing you off, 
you're certainly welcome to just add 1.008 plus 1.008 plus 15.999. It's just that oftentimes we'll have pretty large numbers here, so to make it easier, we do the multiplication. So if you add those two together, 2.016 plus 15.999, I'll give you a second to do that. Add 2.016 plus 15.999. And then because this is molar mass, we're going to keep all of the decimal places. So what did we get when we added those two numbers together? 18.015. Do we agree? Yes. Perfect. And your unit on this would either be grams per mole, or you would write it using one of these types of ratios. So I could say that 18.015 grams of H2O is equivalent to one mole of H2O. All of that is expressing the same information.